protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to robbery detail. Four young hoodlums wanted for a series of robberies are headed for your city. They're armed, reckless, cold-blooded. Your job, get them. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke king-size Fatima. Fatima is the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. And that's why Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So enjoy Fatima, the best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Friday, December 10th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. It was 7.55 a.m. when I got to room 27A. Robbery detail. Morning. Hi, Joe. Morning. Hi, Joe. Cold out, isn't it? Frank, what are you doing here this early? Can't you sleep? I'm waiting for something. Special delivery letter from my brother. Hmm. Well, up in Frisco with the police department? Yeah. Only up there, they don't like it when you call it Frisco. Yeah. He's in robbery detail. Called him last night. All three kids had their tonsils out the same day. Thought it'd be nice to call, see how they were. All three at once? Yeah. Tonsils are nothing these days. How'd they make out? Good. Home already. What's the letter got to do with it? Oh, well, my brother told me he was sending down some dope on four pretty rough characters. Thinks they're headed our way. Sending mug shots, too. Uh -huh. You and your brother running a detective agency on the side? Mm, it's a little irregular. The official correspondence will come a little later. What do you know about the guys? Almost killed a man. I didn't get any details. It's all in the letter. Mm -hmm. Ought to be here any minute. Mailed it at noon yesterday. How come you moved down here with your family, Frank? Don't you like it up north? Well, like L.A. better. More elbow room. Here you live in a house and lot, not just an apartment. Mm -hmm. I get it. Robbery, Friday. This is Wilson. Tony Sharp is there, Joe. Yeah, I think so. Hold it, will you? Tony here? Huh? Oh, I didn't see you behind that paper. For me? Yeah, he's here. Well, if he's not busy, ask him to come over to order, sir. Especially a couple of Mexican girls. Can't speak English. Well, I guess we can spare them for a while. I'll tell them. What's up? Well, that's uh, Wilson, an auto detail. He'd like you to go over and act as interpreter for a couple of Mexican girls. Are they pretty? You're not going down there to marry him. I'll bet you wow him at party. Mm, nothing much doing. Slow day. They don't come often enough for me. If they did, we'd be out of a job. One of those rare slow days. I killed a couple of hours going over the daily reports, cleaned out the top drawer of my desk, sharpened a few pencils. At 10.15 a.m., the special delivery letter came from Frank. He slipped the top open with his pocket knife and shook out four mug shots. Here it is. Following four men wanted for robberies, auto thefts, and safe burglaries in San Francisco Bay Area. Cliff Small, 19. George Shum, 20. Both escaped from Preston. Julius Carver, 18. Fred Malik, 20. Both Army deserters. Well, that checks out with that APB from SF last week. What do the records look like? Small shot an Army captain during an argument at a bar. And on two capers, these men shot it out with us and escaped. Information shows all four left for Los Angeles several days ago. Driving stolen car, blue Chevrolet, probably using cold plates. Mm -hmm. Let me see those mug shots. Mm -hmm. Here. Hmm. Well, now we know who we're looking for. 
Brother, tell us where? Just a couple of nice girls that got mixed up with the wrong guys. Hey, take a look at these pictures, will you, Tony? Oh, the marks from San Francisco. Yeah. It says they're in a stolen car, cold plates. That's how these girls were picked up. In a hot car. Huh? They went for a ride with a couple of guys they met at a movie. When the car ran out of gas, the boys dug the girls got picked up. Did they have a lead on the guy? No, not a thing. The young guys? Around 20. You think these might be the ones from Frisco? Well, let's talk to the girls. Come on. Uh, Frank, you want to cover the office? Oh, yeah, sure. Do they speak English at all? Not enough to make sense. That's Dolores, and this one is Marie. When is this? Senoritas, estos señores son empleados del robbery detail. They say in a terra ustedes algunas preguntas. Nosotras no hicimos nada. Nada. She says they didn't do anything. I suppose they told you all they know already, huh? They're not much help. They say they don't know anything about the fellows they were with. Show them these. Ask them if they've ever seen them before. Yeah. Conocen estos a estos individuos. These are the guys who took them out last night? Ask them. Do you want to say that these two are the ones who took them out last night? Yes, they are. It's Carver and Malik, the army deserters. Ask them to describe them, will you? How were the guys? We told them. We were in the car all the time. It was dark. But they looked very beautiful. And they were talking well. She says they sat in the car all the time. It was dark. But they looked very handsome and they talked nice. Where did the fellas pick them up? They told me in front of the Jubilee Theater, second in Broadway. Yeah. And then what? And the girls couldn't understand English, but they understood when the boys motioned them to hop in. Yeah. Uh, han aceptado ustedes paseos con extraños antes? Por supuesto que no. María creo haberlos visto en la iglesia el domingo. She says no. Marie thought she recognized them from church Sunday. Pero estaba equivocada. But she was mistaken. Must have been some date. The boys couldn't talk Spanish and the girls couldn't talk English. Where'd they go on this ride, Tony? They don't know the streets. They just know they got to the beach and then they turned around and were about halfway back when the car ran out of gas. Mm. Ask them again. See if you can get Marie here to talk. And Maria. Si. Sí. Que camina tomaron para ir a la playa? You know, say. Ay, Maria. Primero, paramos. Cerca de un hotelito. Esperamos mientras los muchachos llevaron a un perito y lo dejaron en su cuarto. She doesn't know, but she remembers they stopped near a little hotel. The girls waited while the boys took a little puppy out of their car and put it in their room. A puppy? Well, if they don't know where the hotel was, maybe they can tell us what it was near. Mm. ¿Qué edificios uh, había cerca del hotel? Mm. En la esquina había... Una estación de gasolina. Yeah, she says there was a gas station on the corner. What else? ¿Qué más? Del otro lado de los rieles había dos o tres garajes. Dos o tres? Yo creo que sí, dos o tres. Mm. She says across the car tracks there were two or three big garages. Yeah. Hmm. Could be in the West Lake District. Mm -hmm. Lots of garages and secondary hotels around there. At least First Street. Maybe Grand Avenue and Pico. Pico! Pico! Ahora me acuerdo. Esa calle era Pico! We took the girls with us and drove out to Grand and Pico, and then up and down Pico slow until the girls pointed out a hotel just south of Flower. They weren't sure. Ben and I got out. We walked up to the hotel desk. The clerk was just starting to vacuum. We're looking for Julius Carver and Fred Malik. Are they staying here? What's the name? Can't hear you over the vacuum. Julius Carver and Fred Malik? No, nope, not here. Police officers. You take a look at these pictures? Well, could have been two of the boys who checked out this morning, but they didn't look as tough as this. How many were there? Four. Here are two more pictures. You have a look, please. Could be. About the right age. How long did they stay? Just two nights. Did they have a pup with them? What? I said they have a pup with them. A puppy dog? Yes, they did. Just a little collie pup. Did they pay up? No, they skipped out, owing me two days. Can we see how they registered, please? Shut off this dang vacuum. Person can't hardly hear himself think over that dragon. 
Now, you want to see the register. We use cards here. Let me see. Now, here they are. Bob Reynolds, Jack Sharp, Jim Smith, and uh, William Grant, Las Vegas, Nevada. I have to pick those names out of a hat. Did they say where they were going? No, no forwarding address. Do they write these cards out themselves? You bet they did. That's the law. You mind if we borrow them for a while? We'll have them photostatted and return to you. We're supposed to keep them, you know. You'll get them back. I like to do everything legal. Those boys in some kind of trouble... Did they leave anything in their room? They did. It's all in the vacuum. If they happen to come back, give us a ring, will you? Here's our card. Robbery detail. Who'd they rob? They took you for two days, right? It was 2 p.m. when Tony Chavez picked us up. He had Frank O'Donnell with him. We stopped at a dairy lunch, and I called the office, and we split up into two teams. While Tony and Frank checked parking lots in the neighborhood for stolen cars, Ben and I ran down the other hotel. In the next three hours, we talked to a dozen desk clerks and rooming house managers. Always the same answer, no. 5.30 p.m., we tried the Achilles Hotel on Grand Avenue. We walked into an overheated lobby crowded with modern furniture. There were a couple of canary cages in front of the faded wall tapestries. The desk clerk was a woman in her early 40s. Good afternoon, ma'am. Police officer. Police officer. Walter! Walter, will you see what these policemen want? Well, just take a minute. We'd like to know if you recognize these pictures here. No. This one? No. No, we only take in honest, hard-working men. Sure. I don't like anybody lazing around the rooms all day. It keeps me from cleaning up. Maybe your room has got a collie pup. A dog? I'd die before I'd allow a dog in this house. Well, if these fellas with a dog try to rent a room, would you please phone us? Here's the number. Lily. Now, get on back in there, honey, where it's nice and warm. Go on, Lily. Go on, go on. Lily's on the nest now. Yes, ma'am. We'd appreciate you watching for these men. For your own protection, too. No, I'll let you know. Thank you, ma'am. Let's go back. Oh, say, before you go, would you gentlemen do me a favor, seeing as how you're a policeman? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Marinelli up in room 14 is a week behind his rent. Would you do me a favor and go up and talk to him? I'm sorry, lady. We can't handle that. That's a civil matter. I'd advise you to go to room 260 down to City Hall and see the city attorney. They'll help you. Walter, what'd I tell you? They won't do it. That's the way it went. It was dark out now and getting cold again. We walked back to Pico and Flower to pick up Frank and Tony. Tony was there waiting for us. All right. Come on up to the next corner. Frank's up there. He's got a hot car staked out. Yeah? Just half a block from the hotel where the guy checked out. You had any luck? No. You find anything in the car? Key's still in it. Nothing else. Well, they could have stolen the glass right after they left the girls, huh? I called in and checked. It was taken in front of uh, 1192 Doheny Drive between 2 and 4 this morning. We got out of code for it. Mm-hmm. That's about six blocks from where they ditched the car with the girls in it. They were out of gas. It's all downhill. It would have been a natural way for them to go. Could be the right car. Better keep the stake out. Well, oh, hi, Frank. Hi. You do any good? No. Frank, mm-hmm. you and Tony want to go eat, and Ben and I will cover the car. When you get back, we'll go for chop. Good deal. Swell. Hold on. Well, let's sit in the car, huh? Yeah, all right. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Get the radio on. Want a cigarette? No. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe it's the same guys, maybe not. In the same neighborhood. A couple of things might tie in. I can't be sure. We're really making headway. About all we know is they're in town. Yeah, and it's a good-sized town. Right now, it's the biggest in the world. 7 p.m. We knew the four gunmen were in town. We knew they'd been seen. We figured there was no reason for them to skip town until they pulled a job or heard that we were looking for them. Time was in their favor. Time to rob, time to kill, time to get away. The check on the hotels continued. We left Frank O'Donnell and Tony Chavez on the stakeout, and Ben and I picked up the hotel routine, one place after another. 8.30 p.m., We walked down a long, narrow lobby to a little bald-headed man at the desk. He was wearing glasses and reading a magazine called Astrology. When we walked in, he tried to hide the bottle. Police officer. (coughs) Would you take a look at these pictures, please? (coughs) What for? See if you can identify them. No. No, they don't look familiar to me. They may be carrying a collie pup. Collie pup? Hmm. 
Let me see those pictures again. All right. Mm. They look familiar now? They had a pup with them, all right. Yes, I think so. I study faces. Yes? The same. Are they here? I don't know. Mean they're out for the evening? I don't know. Are they registered here? Yes, they are. What room? Are they expecting you... Now, listen. This is important. Just answer the question. What did they do? What's their room number? Second floor, room 22. Do you have a key? Uh, just a second. Thank you. Come on, Ben. Cover me, huh? Yeah. 22. Give me the key. Yeah. I'll watch it. Well, maybe we're home. Clothes, shoes, all the stuff here. They'll be back. You are listening to Dragnet for the step-by-step -step solution to an actual police case. Here, step-by-step, -step are the reasons why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers from coast to coast. Step one. The name Fatima has always stood for the best in cigarette quality. Step two. Long cigarette smokers discover Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Step three. Long cigarette smokers find Fatima extra mild. Fatima is the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. And that's why more and more smokers every day agree it's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, the name Fatima on that golden yellow package is your insurance of an extra mild smoke. So enjoy king-size Fatima, the best of all long cigarettes. In the files of the Los Angeles Police Department, there are countless case histories that never got space in the daily newspapers. The case of Cliff Small, George Shum, Julius Carver, and Fred Malik was one of these. Four young hoodlums wanted for a series of robberies and petty burglaries. These men were armed, and they'd shown that they wouldn't hesitate to shoot. By comparison with the sensational crime headline, the news value of this story rated an inch of type on the fourth page of the second section. Yet the line separating these four young thieves from banner headlines and back page space is much thinner than the average citizen realizes. The danger in a criminal case isn't always determined by the space allotted to it in the newspapers. Many a peace officer's name has appeared in the obituary column of the same newspaper that allotted one inch of back page space to the crime story that was considered unimportant. I phoned the office and asked for two men to cover the stolen car. As soon as the replacements arrived, Frank O'Donnell and Tony Chavez left the stakeout on the stolen car and joined us at the hotel. It was 8.55 p.m. So when do they do back? Any idea? No, sir. I told these other officers... I did tell you, didn't I? Yeah, you said they were out for the evening. That's it. I knew I told you something. Was it you two? Or was it you two? It was this fellow and I. Oh, yeah. I don't remember things I say so good. But I know faces. Things. Uh, you're the manager here? Oh, no. This place belongs to Claude. Claude who? Timmy. Then you're in charge now. Only when Claude's not around. This is one of his places. Where are we going to stake out, Joe? Not enough room to turn around this lobby. That's what I've been telling Claude. Uh, Claude Timmy. This is one of his places. Yeah, maybe you better leave that bottle alone when we get this straightened out, huh? Oh, no, I don't hit it heavy anymore. Just a little nip now and again. Drafty in here. Any idea where we can wait for these fellows and keep an eye on the lobby? No, not enough room in this lobby to turn around in. I said that to Claude. Yeah, we know. Hey, clerk, what does this door lead to? <laughs> no, don't go in there. Is there a light in here? <laughs> I save old bottles. Ragman gives me a penny each for them. Is that a storage room? What's that? That room over there. Oh, that's the linen room. We keep all the linen there. That's about the only place there is, Joe. Unless we want to wait out in the car. All right, we'll wait in there. Now, there's a couple of chairs in there. I'll send the boys back when they come in. Be better if you tell them nothing. 
How are they going to know you're here? We'll tell them. You just don't say anything. All right, sir. Now then, if I can just have your names, I'll see that the boys get the message. Now look, mister, you just sit there and read your magazine. Don't say anything. You got that? Okay. That's the way you want it. Come on, let's go. I can get you, gentlemen. No, you just stay at the desk, will you please? Say, Claude Tinney's his name. He's the manager. Remember you asked me about that? Yeah, yeah, we know. What do you want him for? Look, you're going to have to stay away from this door. We don't want him to know we're here. Okay. That's the way you want it. I could use a cigarette. Yeah. All we need in here now is smoke. What time is it, Frank? Oh, never mind. Yeah, you better go out there and get him. He's barking. 
It'll tip him off. Yeah, all right. Now go on back to the desk. All right, then. You stay in here. I'll see if I can catch him. He comes on here again, he'll have to wait in here. Can you see your watch? No. Must be around 11. Yeah, it must be. Fellas are in the clear. What do you mean? That dog of theirs. He's gone. You're in the clear. Look, he's in here with us. Now, will you stay away from here, please? Yeah, it's okay. The dog's gone. Hey, Pop, give me the key for room 22. Yes, sir. That's their room. Come on. Yeah. Get your hands up. Watch him, Joe. Wait a minute, you. You hold it. Get your hands Come off me. Get All right. Hands up. No. Oh. It didn't have to slap me. You didn't have to pull that gun. All right, now over here. Stand still. 38 revolver on this one. Well, here it is. 45 Colt. What's your name? I'm Cliff Small. He's George Shum. How old are you? 19. Cops? If we weren't. You'd be in a lot more trouble than you are. That's all of them. Yeah. Now let's feed that pup. 12.15 a.m., we took the prisoners down to the city hall to the interrogation room. Tony Chavez and Frank O'Donnell were there with the other two, Carver and Malik. While Ben helped question the suspects and made out the necessary reports, I went across the street to the federal cafe. I picked up two 10-cent bottles of milk and a few slices of bread. <laughs> Look at him go. He was hungry. Yeah. How'd you come out? And the guys all here. Oh, let's see. Four stolen cars, eight known robbers in San Francisco they copped out to. Three jobs in Portland they admitted. You remember that Bakersfield liquor store hold up about four weeks ago? A Watson job? They pull that? Yeah, probably a lot more. They haven't told us all of it yet. We got out an APB. We'll probably get a lot more wants on it. Well, that's it. None of them are even old enough to vote yet. But they've committed practically every crime in the book. Just one thing more left to work out. What do we do with the pup? How about the SPCA? That's my home point. No, not this little guy. Why don't you take him, Tony? You got kids. You got a deal. Aquí. Aquí, Felipe. madre era cole, pero de hoy en adelante eres pero policía. Translation. Your mother was a cole, but from now on you're a police dog. February 9th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 88, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. It's amazing how many long cigarette smokers are changing to Fatima. Here is the actual report. From coast to coast, king-size Fatima has more than doubled its smokers. Yes, more and more smokers every day are discovering that Fatima is the best of all long cigarettes. Long cigarette smokers find Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Long cigarette smokers find that Fatima is extra mild because it's the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild. So enjoy extra mild Fatima. Best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Clifford Small, George Shum, Julius Carver, and Fred Malick were released to San Francisco authorities where they were tried and convicted on eight counts of robbery in the first degree. A hold was placed on them by the state of Oregon. They are now serving their terms in the state penitentiary. Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, the best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet from Los Angeles. Tomorrow, hear the Ronald Coleman's charming series, The Halls of Ivy, on NBC. NBC.